Hey everyone, welcome back to Snake Limited. I'm John and today what we have behind me here is the new Mini 130 from ARS. I just got it in yesterday. I took the day to build it. Um, I actually ordered it probably about two weeks ago. They told me it would take four to six weeks to get here, um, but it actually didn't. It actually came here in like two weeks, so I'm really happy uh, with how quick it got here. I actually added another level up top so it's technically a mini 140 um, because i have the clearance here to to fit it up here and it fits right below these i beams here so what i wanted to do was to talk about it a little bit show it to you guys and let you know what my first impressions are so for those of you that have sort of ptsd from building <laughs> um ars racks i think this one probably takes a little less time to build but it's still not fast um, the main difference in these racks are that these the glides that are inside each shelf here up here instead of them being separate glides um, they're actually one big piece so there's there's two pieces per level so from here this these five are just one giant plastic piece and then these five are all just one giant plastic piece so if you can see kind of right here that's the middle one right there and that's where they you attach them together um so it makes it a little easier to build them together because you're not having to screw in each one of these gliders uh individually because previously you had to put in this one and this one and this one and this one you had to do that all separately put them all in separately so it makes it a little quicker. However, it's still not fast. I still think there was roughly, I think I counted 19 screws per level. So multiply that by how many levels you have there. Most of you are probably gonna have 130. Um, so there's still <laughs> a, a lot of screwing that's involved in putting this thing together. I think after I got it unboxed, it took me roughly three hours to physically build it. So that's, everything's unboxed, laying out on the floor. From the time that I started putting the um, caster bases on the bottom uh, bottom level to the time that I finished put, building this top shelf, it took me about three hours. Now that doesn't include unboxing. That doesn't include separating all these tubs and putting them into the rack. That doesn't include the heat panels, how you have to unwrap the cords and each panel individually and then uh, adhere them to the levels. I would say all of that stuff probably takes an, at least an extra hour. I would say maybe even more. Maybe it takes an extra hour and a half to two hours. So all in, you're probably still looking to take four to five hours to build this by yourself. If you have a few extra hands, it's definitely going to help. If some of this works pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Um, I would feel like I did this pretty quick because this is my one, two, three, four, fifth one I built and they're all pretty much the same. So it's not difficult. There's not a whole lot different that you need to do assuming that you assemble it correctly. So I would say it's still gonna take you four to five hours to fully build this and have it set up and ready to go inside your building. All right, now I wanted to show you guys the size difference here between the Mini 130 in the 1065 tub uh, obviously you can tell which one's smaller um, this one here is the mini 130 and this is the 1065 tub it is uh, it's a little roughly probably half the size or so um you know assuming that you know this this side of the tub here where it's the flat part it probably reaches halfway through the cup on the 1065 tub so um, i think most people were saying these tubs are probably good for snakes that are up to maybe 400 grams this one it really just depends um i've had snakes seven eight hundred grams in these and they actually prefer this and <laughs> before i move them up into the bigger tubs um so it depends on how big of a snake um and i guess whether they're eating live or not as well i think if they're still hunting prey in this it might be a little tight when you're 700 grams um but I think I try to keep them in here until I move them up to the bigger racks, like the 1070 or these guys over here. So I wanted to show you what it looks like when I have some snakies 
in these tubs and what the size differences are. So this is the Super OD Leopard Fire Pied Het Ultra Mel that I hatched a little earlier, uh, about two months ago. Let me get a weight here. If you look at her, she, still, she actually just had her second shed yesterday. Um, so I figured why not show her off? Um, she's growing like a weed and gosh, she pretty. I can't wait to breed her in a couple years. <laughs> All right, so she is 165 grams right now. All right, so if we get her and we put her in this new mini 130 tub, that is a ton of room for that snake. Um, she is not going to be growing out of that anytime soon. Now, let me take a snake that I produced. Uh, I think these hatched in the beginning of December. Let me see here. This is a... Pastel Mojave Pied at MJ Exanthic, who has a terrible attitude. I believe she's probably around, she is 320. So she's 320 grams. And let me show you what they look like next to each other in there. So she's probably, uh, let's see, she's almost five months old. She's probably about a month or so old. I would say 400 grams is probably the upper limit for what you're going to be putting snakes in here. If she's around, you know, 350 grams, let's say, to uh, to make it even, um, she's kind of at the size limit there. Obviously, the girl, look at her, she's getting ready to bite. She is a, both of these girls are very, very spicy. Um, she's at the probably upper limit for what you're going to be using for, um, you know, housing for your smaller snakes. So she's 330. She's one, one, I think 130. I think if I remember correctly, so there's about 200 gram difference there. Again, 350, 400 grams is probably where you're going to be removing that snake, um, and putting them into the 1065 tubs. Now, if you want to compare what they look like in the respective tubs, um, again, this is a smaller 130 gram snake. This is a 350 gram snake. There's a lot more space in here for the snake. I previously put all of my brand new hatchlings in the 1065s, and I've never had issues with them feeding or you know feeling comfortable in them. So it's okay to keep your snakes in here, but when you are breeding, uh, I, I can fit twice as many snakes in this rack as I can in this rack. This one's a little bit wider, but it almost takes up the same footprint. And this is going to be extremely important for space when you are breeding snakes and you have, I don't know, 100 hatchlings. Um, whereas I'd have to have two of these racks to fit the same amount of stuff. And then you run into issues where if you're filling this rack up with hatchlings, then your bigger snakes that are 300 grams, 400 grams, 500 grams, they don't have any space um, to move up into, <laughs> you're moving those guys into your bigger racks. And then when you're moving those guys into your bigger racks, then you're running out of space in there for your breeding snakes. So where I think the mini 130 comes into play is if you're breeding snakes and you didn't plan on holding on to them very long and you're going to be selling a lot of them, you can put them in this rack, you raise them for a few months, let's say up to a half a year, and hopefully by that time they're sold and you, uh, you know, free up that space and you're not taking up space for your holdbacks or for your adults. All right, I wanted to throw another snake into the mix here. This is a female clown pie. She's about 650 grams in the 1065 and as you can see she's still very comfortable in size in this 1065 so she's 650 grams i would say you'd be comfortable putting snakes up to eight nine hundred grams in this tub i would say 350 400 grams here so uh hatchling to 400 grams let's say in the mini 130 400 grams to eight, 900 grams in the 1065. And then you can move the snakes up into your adult racks. But as you can see here, this clown pied still has a ton of space to move around in here. I haven't had any issues with snakes this size wrapping up prey in the 1065. And that allows you to kind of free up space in your adult racks. All right, so is it worth it? What's my review of it? Well, 
If you own an ARS rack, it is basically just like every other rack, other than you don't have to put on the individual guide rails to hang the tubs up. There's just the bigger panels, which I believe they're also coming out with a, I think it was a, I think they call it the 1078, which is basically, it looked like it was the 1065 with an extra column. So instead of it being five across, it's six across and it has the same hangers that this does. It's basically this rack with these tubs in it. So I think that's going to make it a lot easier um, in terms of building. I wouldn't be surprised if they discontinued this at some point and just started producing everything this size for the smaller tubs. Um, if you are breeding snakes and you're going to be producing more than one or two clutches every year, I think this is an absolute necessity. Uh, it looks fantastic with your other ARS racks. Uh, the tubs are, I think, are the perfect size. I think with these, I'm actually going to start putting Cocoa Core in here instead of what I normally put in these tubs as paper. Uh, because let's get in there. I usually use, just use unprinted newspaper in these. It's pretty simple um, for the smaller snakes, but there'd be a lot of bunched up paper in here, I believe, if I was trying to shove that big old piece of paper down here in one of these tubs. So I'm going to start using cocoa. It'll help keep humidity up a little bit better. The only thing that I have a minor concern on is these uh, tiny deli cups that you have to use in these. I'm hoping that that suffices um, for water for the babies in between, you know, water changes. Um, and it's not something where I'm having to go through this rack every couple of days and completely, you know, refill them all because they're running out of water. I don't think they'll drink that much water between, you know, full water changes, but I hope to God they do not because that's going to be a lot of work. Now, ARS didn't have these up on their website up until I believe this week. Um, I believe they just made them go live on the website. I think you can purchase them directly through the site now. When I ordered this, you still had to email ARS and they had to do the invoicing through email, but I think you can buy it live from the site now. I don't know what the lead times are at this point, but um, like I said, when I ordered mine two weeks ago, they said four to six weeks and it got here in two weeks. So I'm assuming um, their lead times are actually a little faster than what they're estimating. However, if this is going live on the site now and people can see it and it's easier to order and you don't have to email somebody, it might make the lead times kind of go up a little bit, which is what I would be worried about if you're in need of one. So if you want one, I'd order it now before, don't hesitate because the lead times might kind of get a little longer as we get closer to summer and people start to realize that they are available for order on the website. So I'm very excited about this purchase. Um, it got here just in time for hatchling season here. I believe right at this point I have, I think six clutches in the incubator, um, roughly about 40 eggs or so. I had some bigger clutches in there. Plus I just had a prelay shed from this super pastel Mojave clown female. She was bred to an OD blade pied head clown. Let's see what else we got. This girl, who I should be getting clown pieds from, she's about 30 millimeter follicles. So she should be uh, hopefully having a pre lace shed sometime soon. Let's see, who else do we have? I think I have a couple females that were bred by that OD blade pied head clown. This female is one of them. She was a pastel lesser leopard. She uh, should be due to lay by the mid May. This girl in the, oop, there you go, I forgot that. This girl should be laying in the first week and a half of May. She was bred to the Ultra Pied. She is a pastel leopard pied. And I think that's it for prelay sheds for now, if I remember correctly. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of rolling along. This is still primed to be our biggest year ever. The eggs that are due to hatch any day now was my OD Leopard Firefly Ultramel Het Pied Male that was bred to a plain pied female. So half of those babies should be visual pied head Ultramel. And I'm hoping to hit some really cool combos with that. Um, you know, OD Leopard Firefly would be fantastic because they would be pied 100% head Ultramel, uh, which is 
huge for the ultrafine project um, so by the time this video posts I'm hoping that these eggs start to pip and I can do an egg cutting and maybe have some previews on Instagram so yeah very excited about this rack uh, it looks good in here I you know, I because of deciding to buy this I had to again redesign the whole snake room the second time this year um, but I think this is kind of the final way it's gonna be I have uh, the two hatchling and kind of grow out racks here I have all the adult racks there I have all the rodents here I have my stack of four by twos over there incubators here some more rodents and some pets um, I was able to kind of nestle in my tables in here as I need to this is my ultrasound station with all my equipment um, this is the the baby table basically where I just keep all the paper I'll probably put the extra cocoa down there so it's I think it's in its final form um, I am reserving this space right here that if I do need another rack it can fit right here perfectly um, I don't know if one of the bigger racks will fit there but I think a t the 1065 did fit here before the bigger ones might be too wide but I'd have to figure that out um, in case I do need any more space and you know there's always I could probably even move this 4x2 over to here and then put another rack in there if I need to as well so there's still space I try to really maximize what I can do in this space um, you know there's limited space here I really don't want to have to move out of the basement I'm, I can't financially afford that right now anyways I can't go rent a space um, but in two years I don't really want to move out of this space so what I'm trying to do is maximize it that's why I got this rack I am trying to sell uh, the stuff that I don't need anymore if you if they're not sold at this point I have a ton of adult pied females uh, that are available some of which have not been bred this year along with a male who has not been bred this year so they're actually ready to breed you can pick up you can buy them and start breeding them right away um, so I'm trying to upgrade my genetics when possible so I'm not adding snakes I'm just kind of replacing snakes so that I'm not producing more I'm just producing better so yeah and that's what we're doing it's gonna be an exciting year we have a lot of stuff coming up I have some big acquisitions that I've made recently that I will unveil here I think once I have the project uh, kind of compiled a little better um, but there's a lot of stuff going on so eggs are gonna start hatching fast and furious here pretty soon I think two of those clutches are due to hatch in May and then four of them are due to hatch in June and there's a ton like I said there's like 40 eggs in there so that's it um, awesome rack I definitely recommend it if you have ARS racks then you know what the quality is about um, this is basically the same thing with a little easier installation but still set yourself four or five hours to go ahead and do that so thank you guys for tuning in and we will see you next time